Gameplay, commentary, YouTubers. A bygone era of YouTube, which I actually grew up watching. Yes, my childhood was very, very sad. The point of gameplay commentary videos was to talk about recent drama that had happened or just other things usually involving YouTube. Like, that was the point. But in my head, instead of thinking, hmm, maybe this creator actually is a horrible human being, I just sat there thinking, hmm. That's a good game right there. Like, just look at the gameplay. I really want to play that. So I gathered a list of all the games I remember classic gameplay commentary channels playing f <coughs> me. As well as some of the newer games the channel started playing. Let's get into it. Also, please subscribe. It will really help. Thank you. So the first game and arguably the most popular game, Cluster Truck. I'd say that this game definitely sets the bar when it comes to a gameplay commentary game. It's fast paced, can keep the viewer's attention, and overall is pretty fun to watch and play. The main point of the game is to jump from truck to truck and eventually get to the end, and it's more fun than you think. You get more power-ups as you go along to make the levels easier to deal with, and overall I'd say it's a really fun experience. But remember, like most games on this list, do not expect this game to be very fun for longer than 45 minutes. There isn't a lot to keep you engaged for that long. I'd say it's a good time killer, like most of the games on this list. Next one, get to the orange door. Yeah, this one is good. I like the style, I like its class. But most of all, I like your ass. Ding dong! Where hey! You run about shooting different enemies, but the catch is you constantly have to be moving, otherwise you're gonna die pretty quickly. You can jump and bounce off the walls, slide all over the place, and you have a big assortment of weapons to choose to kill all your enemies. There are multiple different game modes to choose from as well, and overall, I'd say it's one of the most addicting games on this list. But still, like most of the games on this list, it gets really old really fast. Ah, the classic. Seum Speedrunners. Is that how you, is that how you say it? Seum? 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 One of the best games on this list, in my opinion. You run about levels trying to complete them in the quickest time possible, and even though most games on this list do have speedrunning features such as Cluster Truck, with Seum you have to beat the level in a certain time limit otherwise you lose. And if you beat it in a better time than the game wants you to, well, good for you. As the game progresses you get different power-ups such as the one allowing you to fly, one that creates platforms, and one that rewinds time. Like there's so much variety here, and because of the differentiating levels and constant switch up of power-ups, you'll get bored of this game much slower than any of the other ones. Also, it's a classic. Come on, show me one gameplay commentary channel that didn't play this back in the day. <sighs> and now on to probably one of the worst games on this list, Frost Runner. Now, to be fair, the game is free, so there is that, but then also you realise it's 30 minutes long. There's only a few levels in the game, and it's basically just a reskin of a story about my uncle, which is a million times better in every way, but I'll, I'll talk about that in a bit. In Frost Runner, you just run in the frost, and that's it, really. There isn't really much else to do. You have this beam thing that acts like a grappling hook, and there's ice physics on a couple of the levels, and that's the entire game. Like Seum, it also has a fucking speedrunning feature, but who cares? <laughs> it's not bad gameplay-wise, but come on. It's half an hour long. Even though it's free, I still think that's a rip-off. Other than that, there really isn't much to talk about this game. It's it's not the best. And now, onto my favourite game on this list, A Story About My Uncle. It has everything you'd want in a game. A great story that you don't need to pay attention to, but it's still good if you do. Great gameplay that never gets old because the area around you is constantly changing. New and exciting upgrades which can greatly change the course of the game. It, it's just got everything. Like, fucking congrats to this game. Like, it's genuinely really good. In the story of this game, you find your uncle's old lab, grab one of his super suits, and fly off to a distant land to try and find him. The suit gives you this grapple ability as well as being able to propel you in different directions. Later on in the game, you get rocket boots that allow you to fucking light speed forward like you're the Millennium Falcon. My only issue with it is for a game called A Story About My Uncle, when you do find this illustrious uncle who's been foreshadowed the entire game, first of all, he looks like he should be put on a watch list. And second, your entire conversation with him after trying to find him the whole game is, hey, come home, like, everyone's worried about you, like, what the fuck are you doing out here? No. Oh, oh, okay, I'm just gonna leave then. Like, what the fuck? That's how it ends. What, why? But other than that, it's pretty good. I'll give it that. Now, this game is kind of a newish one, and it's Hot Lava. One of the classic gameplay commentary channels played this back in the day, but let's be honest, they fucking would have if this game came out back then. Basically, the floor is lava, and you have to run about your environments not touching the floor, but instead parkouring over the various platform the game offers you. The controls are really responsive and the levels are really creative, some being on a playground, the others being in a school hall, and others being in a house. 
And overall, it's pretty good. My only complaint would be how there's no power-ups in the game, like most of the other games have, because I think this game would have really worked well with them, but it's just a small complaint. And if we're talking about games that the newer generation of gameplay commentary YouTubers are playing, then of course we can't forget about Minecraft. Whether it being Bed Wars, one of the most famous multiplayer Minecraft games of all time, or the parkour maps, Minecraft has just been popping up more and more. Which, you know, I don't mind. These games are good. But I do miss the times where you'd see these weird, obscure games being played that were actually really fun if you gave them a go. Also, honourable mentions for Mirror's Edge, an incredibly fun parkour game with a great story. Steep, a very fun snowboarding game. And Dying Light, which brought us the legendary clip. So, guys, we did it. We reached a quarter of a million subscribers. But I feel like there's one more. These stories like, especially, there's just they were this really feeling in me that says, oh, oh, no. no. That's right. You didn't think I'd miss out on one of the most famous gameplay commentary games to date, did you? Everyone, and I mean everyone, whether they're old or new, shit or good, has used CSGO Surf as their gameplay. It's just a classic. It's so famous at this point, even the four-year-old gameplay commentaries are playing it. Today, I will be talking about kid YouTubers. I am 100% aware of the stigma kid YouTubers have. But seriously though, like, where the fuck are these kids' parents? I, I personally blame Leafy. He's the reason we live in this wasteland of a timeline. And even though they'll never bring back those old commentary videos, at least we still have the memories. My name is Kazlo, and... Get out, everybody! So guys, that's it for today's video. I hope you did enjoy. If you did, be sure to like, comment and subscribe. I had a lot of fun making this video, so it would be greatly appreciated. And have a good one. Bye-bye.